What's up, aliens? Ahi here. Welcome to my new studio. So today we're going to be going over five ultimate sound design techniques using sine waves. Let's get into it. All right. So sine waves, still massive influence on the bass music of today. So we're going to cover five different approaches um, and we'll be using serum and all of the sounds in this video that you'll hear uh, will be available in the Signs of Life Volume 2 pack, which uh, is at my new website in the description of this video. More on that later. Here, I'll play all the sounds real quick. All right, let's get into them. All right, so for this first technique, it's so ridiculously simple. It's going to be mind boggling. And you're like, is this even a sound design technique? And yes, it is. It's freaking cool. So all it is, is we're literally adding sine waves together. So there's no post processing. You know, we've got like a, a wub here. Uh, I've put an LFO on the level of a sine tone. And then here I've added in another oscillator, added the wub to it as well. But we've clicked here and gone into the wavetable editor and we've literally just added in two frequencies that's all gone and i'll just add them back in 11 12 make one of them a little off like that and boom when we're adding these in we're literally adding in sine waves that are the harmonics this process is called additive synthesis because you're adding up s sine waves to create a new sound you could draw in other harmonics as well mess around with their phase definitely experiment with that all right next one we're again adding sine waves but this time we're using the digital harmonic series uh, wavetable and that way we can scroll through it and find a different frequency and then after that again no effects we can add in this filter so it acts as sort of a wobble zone I really liked that one right there so if we look again in the uh, span look it's just two sine waves but you can do so much with that sound so sick right all right that's another way to add in a sine tone or we can get a little bit more complicated with how the sine tones are again no effects so what we're doing here is we're pitch bending both this high pitched one and this low pitched one now this high pitched one all it is is two sine tones but it's way higher up in octaves the phase is off a little bit right there too as you can see you could go through and like add in all sorts of harmonics Ooh, that makes it a little buzzy that's really sick i'm gonna save that one so yeah all it is is just that descending pitch and like with a beat behind that that's gonna sound crazy another way you could achieve this is by say let's start with that harmonic series one we'll go up a few octaves maybe we'll also sync it with the window up that one's really cool too i gotta save that one <laughs> sorry y'all it's just a sound design session for me now what we could do is then in menu resample to oscillator b so i'm actually going to turn this off i'm going to bypass all destinations because we don't want that pitch bend in there i'm going to resample to oscillator b so now check this out there you go got that one little weirdness right there and we'll reactivate all those destinations that unison on two and the little detuning gives it some spread there sine waves just adding them in additive synthesis building the sound from sine waves up all right let's get into the second type of synthesis with sine waves and that is distorting and filtering so again all we've got is the sine wave here and we've put it through a distortion and that is the entire sound right there oh yeah we've added this lfo to the uh, post filter but it, here if we play with the drive we can see it adds in harmonics
and you can experiment with the different types of distortion that you're using. Well, that one's kind of sick, but you can see that one, that one sounds terrible. So you want to go with a more subtle approach with just the distortion. But we, since we put it on the wub there and activated this filter, gives it more of that more movement. Second technique when playing around with distortion and sine waves is to distort two different sine waves to each other. So we've got a high pitched uh, sine wave and a low pitched one, and we've distorted them together. Very nice. You can play around with the distortion type. That one was sounding quite nice. And you can also play around with the octave or the, the wavetable position. Try out different sine tones. You can see we can really control the harmonics using this. Also, you can control it with the level. Too much of it, and it overrides the sub. Definitely fun thing to play around with. Uh, and see, you, you just want to go off of your ear and what feels right in this kind of particular circumstance. Now, you could also do that same thing just by adding in another sine wave like we are doing right in here. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is uh, you can add in noise, uh, you can add in more distortion, add in another filter, some compression afterwards. Here I've also got a second LFO and this is controlling the master tune inside of the pitch here. It's going down about eight right there so you can see it going what 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 what, which is a really cool sound we play around. That's a fun technique. All right. On to the third one. So the third one, this one's a classic FM synthesis, which is a frequency modulation synthesis. Quick, fun story about this. So something interesting about FM synthesis is the history of it. It was actually uh, different companies like Moog tried to patent the process of FM synthesis, but in court, it was determined to be a law of nature rather than a patentable thing uh, because birds have been using FM synthesis for millions of years before humans ever came along and tried to use it. And it's a good thing too, because otherwise we wouldn't be doing this right here. We'd be doing it on some other synth and who knows, Steve Duda might not have come up with all the amazing things that he did inside Zero. But anyways, let's get back into it. So for this, I just have two sine waves and uh, I'm... I've gone down and selected FM from B and I have it automating up and I have just done it where it's just one octave up and it's also adding a little bit of wub there and it's doing a little bit of pitch bending here. To describe FM synthesis you basically have you have to have two oscillators. One is called the carrier which is this fundamental thing uh, which is the usually you want to have it as the base and then a, a modulator, so a carrier and a modulator. Modulator will be oscillator B here. And uh, the modulator is what is modulating the carrier and the carrier is what's carrying the modulation. Got it? All right. So the more FM we have, the more it sounds terrible. So uh, you wanna be more subtle when using FM specifically with sine tones. So here I've just added in a little bit. I've gone up to what is this, 39? And that's like a nice deep wub right there. This one you'll recognize, super classic sound. Play around with the octaves. Let's look at this FM amount. Up 37% and I'm only going up 8. So very subtle amount there. And we've added in a filter as well as some reverb and compression after the fact as well. So without... filter adds in a lot of shape so does this funky shark fin kind of uh, LFO shape there again really mess around with these octaves create a bunch of different sounds like that other sound try adding in the sync now if you don't have it perfectly zero crossing it is going to add in harm more harmonics so beware of that or you could just uh, up the window size and that will 
help get rid of some of those but it will sound different so all subtle different changes now this one's a very popular kind of sound right now sort of skanka kind of style hamdi here i've used one of my advanced lfos which is from the uh lfo volume lfo shapes volume one pack uh, oh that's the swing one yeah here's all the wubby ones uh and fun trick you can actually just hold down option and click through and you can go through a bunch of different options here so what's unique about this is that we've sort of uh, chosen a more spectrally um, this trilobite 3 spectrally wavetable position here to FM from again 33 9% there very subtle um, and it's gone up two octaves but you can still see it sort of looks like a sine wave but it's just got more information in it so definitely explore through some of these different options here um, in the spectral thing that look like sine waves but are not like this monster eight one yeah see how that looks like that one's a nice one too oh monster nine that way you still have a lot of warmth of the sine wave style but you've got all the extra noise and buzz at the top end all right let's get into the fourth technique and that is resonance and filter distortion now this one's sort of a variation off of the uh, second technique of distorting two different sine waves but how we generate the second sine wave is through cranking the resonance almost all the way on the filter and then distorting those things together so if i was to turn off the uh distortion sound like that but with the distortion on super classic style in drum and bass and you can mess with the cutoff to tune it. Definitely, you have to have this little keyboard tracking thing on in order for this to tonally work. Definitely try to tune this in. That one sounded good. We got a sine wave, but we're going into a comb, distortion comb. But check this out because of the frequency it's like picking up all these other things distorting it so you can almost like create these like weird glitchy melodic moments and then like really play around with let's go to the um melodic lfo shapes in here play around <laughs> that is fun all right and the fifth one so this one also isn't in the pack i just wanted to come up with a sound design technique on the spot because i don't want to encourage y'all to just like copy but i want y'all to think outside of the box so i wanted to think outside of the box on this particular uh challenge for myself and so i was thinking well what other ways can i use sine waves inside serum and so i thought like detuning them but then i was like oh yeah there's this thing over here in the global where you can change the stack function of uh and also the range of the detunes here so i've i've put the range from uh two semitones to a full octave and then also i've added the stack to add like a octave and a seventh and i've made the mode uh super and so now when we listen to this it's just a sine wave with seven voices <laughs> And there we go. The detune's even not, not up that much. That's almost like three three notes. Let's see if we can get away with three. No. Really needs at least four to get that. What if we go up to 14? Eh, it starts getting a little messy. That seven was really nice. We can make like a, a chill like house track with that kind of sound. All right. If y'all enjoy this, you know what to do. Hit that like. Hit that subscribe, leave a comment below, help this video, share it with some friends. And again, if you enjoyed all the sounds, you can get it in my new Serum preset pack called Signs of Life Volume 2. Uh, that's a follow-up to the first one I did about that Skrillex video uh, last time using sine waves. I just felt like I could get, I when diving into it, I learned so much more. I could get like so much more out of it. I think y'all are going to love this pack. It's available exclusively on my new website, ahibase.com slash store. And I'm going to be trying to uh, put all of my newest products exclusively up on this site. So 
definitely go check it out. You can also click on the link below in the description. And I hope y'all love it. All right. I will talk to y'all soon. Peace, aliens. Okay, Tony, you're just a...